Chi Yoko. How are you doing? I finally finished my end of term exams today. Now, all that's left is to wait for summer vacation. I'm sure you must be curious about what end of term exams are since it's your time, right? What's summer vacation like in your era? End of term exams test how much you remember from what you've learned in school. This time, we covered material up until the Edo period, so I'll be studying about your era starting from autumn. Summer vacation is about a month long, and there's a lot of homework to do. Plus club activities keep me quite busy. Hanging out with friends is a lot of fun, though. By the way, it's a bit late now to know how to pronounce my name. Laughs. It's Takiro to read it. It's an unusual name, but I like it. I'm a high school entrance exam candidate, so I have to study hard to get into my desired high school. Your letters are a great break from studying. Thank you. From Takiro. Summer 2023. I've been exchanging letters with a girl from the Taisho era for a few months now. I don't really understand the details of how the delivery works, but I believe that she truly lives in the Taisho era. And I've been continuing these letters to make studying Japanese history a bit more enjoyable. Well, actually, the real reason is that I find our correspondence enjoyable. Receiving letters from her is truly amazing for me, a boy attending an all-boys school. Her words are beautiful and gentle. My first love is a girl from the Taisho era. It's quite romantic, isn't it? Is this what they call Taisho romance? Maybe not. I haven't told anyone about this because I know they wouldn't believe it. She seems to feel the same way. This is our little secret. Thinking about it that way makes me look forward to her letters even more. Takito. Thank you for your letter. I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to ask about the pronunciation of your name. Takito sounds lovely. I'm glad you understand what end of term exams and summer vacation are like for me. You're so considerate your best on your entrance exams, and I'll do my best taking care of my family and doing household chores with your letters as my source of motivation. I'm curious about the air you'll be studying from autumn onwards. But, you know, once I learn about it, life might not be as enjoyable. So, I'll have fun imagining what lies ahead, both in your time and mine. Today, I dressed up and went to Genza Street with my friends. There were many stylish ladies with bright red lipstick, and I decided that I'll become like them in a few years. I want to become beautiful and maybe meet you someday, Takito. From Chiyoko. She once told me how she decided to write the first letter out of curiosity. She had imagined various aspects of Tokyo's cityscape and civilization a hundred years from her time and decided to put it on paper. After she left the place for a moment, the paper disappeared. She thought someone might have used it as scratch paper, and she completely forgot about it. Until a response from a hundred years in the future arrived. There was no sender or recipient mentioned on the paper, and it was left on my study desk. When I opened it, I saw the title a hundred years from now, and beneath it were various things written in bullet points that were hard to understand. I thought my little brother had played a prank but some of the things mentioned were already in existence a machine that washes clothes automatically must be a washing machine, I guess, and I couldn't understand the rest. But it was interesting, so I replied on the back of the paper, listing things that currently exist or don't exist in our time. And somehow, without my knowledge, it crossed time and reached the Taisho era. Chiyoko? I bet the grown-up Chiyoko is beautiful. We'll both be adults in five more years. You say you don't want to know about the future, but I think my first letter already gave you a pretty good idea of what inventions and changes to expect. Laughs. Please live a long life and try using a washing machine. You'll be amazed, I'm sure. But more importantly, if Chiyoko lives a really long life, do you think you'll get to meet the young me from back then? We both live in Tokyo. So it's not entirely impossible. I'd love to meet even for just a moment. From Takiro. I'd love to meet, just for a moment. Because I like you. I swallow those last words without writing them. 
If I suddenly told her something like that, I might scare her away. Despite the pure, time transcending correspondence we've had, letters always take exactly 10 days to reach her, and vice versa. I wish someone could deliver a smartphone to her. Then we could communicate every day, hear each other's voices, and even laugh together through a screen. Come to think of it, she seemed to accept various inventions and advancements, but she mentioned that she couldn't understand anything about smartphones. That makes sense. Even I, who use them every day, don't really understand how they work. Takito, thank you for your letter. You're right, I've learned a lot from your letters. I want to try using a washing machine, and if there's something called an air conditioner, I might never leave the house again. I want to tell everyone that such things exist in the future, but no one would believe me, which is frustrating. I promise I'll live a long life so we can meet. There's something I've been wanting to tell you for a while, but is it okay if I write it now? Takito, I like you. I really, really want to meet you. I want to hold your hand and walk through the streets of Tokyo. I'd go to any era for that. Sorry for saying this so suddenly. It must be weird, right? You can throw away this letter if you want. You don't have to reply if it's too much. I just wanted to convey my feelings. From Chiyoko. Her letter arrived, and on the last day of summer vacation, I shouted with joy so loudly that my mother scolded me. It was probably because my little brother, who is usually noisy, was quiet due to the mountain of homework. That's why my shout echoed even more. The sun was setting. Summer was coming to an end. On that evening, after finishing dinner, I was idly watching the news program my father was watching. I thought it was time to go back to my room and prepare for tomorrow when I heard the announcer's words, and my mind went blank. Tomorrow marks the 100th anniversary since the Great Kanto Earthquake. The Great Kanto Earthquake. Even I, who struggled with Japanese history, knew it was an unprecedented disaster. I quickly took out my smartphone and searched for information about the Great Kanto Earthquake. It occurred on September 1, 1923. Approximately 105,000 people died, with 70,000 in Tokyo. It's okay. It's not certain that she was involved. The more I tried to believe that, the more I couldn't stop my tears. I should write a letter right now, urging her to go far away. The response to my confession could wait. I just prayed for a miracle to happen, for this letter to reach her as soon as possible, even if it takes less than 10 days. Please, God, I'll do anything. Chiyoko, I have a request. Please go as far away as you can with your loved ones. Tomorrow, an unbelievably massive earthquake will strike Tokyo. Please write to me when things calm down. I'll be waiting forever. From Takiro, time passed, and the seasons turned to winter. Since then, I hadn't heard anything from her. I wrote several letters to her, but I couldn't send them to her anymore. Sitting by the window, gazing at the snow outside, I attempted to solve a Japanese history workbook. The Great Kanto earthquake occurred in 1923. I had never forgotten that year. But it was no longer of any use. Why didn't I realize it sooner? I blamed myself over and over. I graduated from junior high and became a high school student. One rainy day when the rainy season was finally ending, I visited the house of a friend I had become close to in my class. When I arrived at his house, a kind-looking old man welcomed me. Friend of my grandson, Takiro. It's written as Takiro like time traveling, right? It's cool. Introduced to me in that way, I greeted the old man and said, I'm sorry for intruding. Then, as I was leaving, the old man handed me a piece of paper. Unable to wait until I got home, I opened it on the roadside with my umbrella still up. There, I saw the characters I had been waiting for. The sound of the rain receded. My heart was momentarily transported back to that summer. Takito, thank you for the letter back then. I miraculously survived the earthquake and have been able to live this long. When I went to the place where my house used to be a few weeks after the earthquake, 
I found a letter from you. Everything else had been burned, but your letter survived. Maybe it arrived after the fire had gone out. Thank you for trying to help me. I couldn't stop crying when I read your letter. I poured my feelings into it, even though it was so presumptuous of me. I wrote a reply right away, but it seems it didn't reach your time. So, I entrust this letter with the hope that my son will meet Takito, a miracle. By the way, I was able to see washing machines and air conditioners with my own eyes. I like to think I came up with the idea for the washing machine before anyone else. Many other machines that you mentioned have made our lives richer. I am ill, and I will leave this world soon. I will turn 80 next month, so I want to hang on until then. Takito, we'll be able to meet somewhere in the future, right? I'm looking forward to it. From Chiyoko. Tears flowed down my cheeks. They were warm tears different from that day. She was alive. She had survived that earthquake and had become the beautiful lady she had admired. That alone was enough. And on top of that, in her final moments, she remembered me and wrote me a letter. A correspondence that, like a smartphone, they themselves didn't understand the mechanics of. If she had used a smartphone, she could have connected with people from various places, but perhaps in the future, there were machines that allowed them to connect with people from different eras. Thinking about it suddenly, I, too, tried to imagine various things about the future, just like she did. I'll also live a long life and bring back lots of souvenirs for you, Chiyoko. With the promise, it felt like she smiled at me. When I looked up at the sky, I realized the rain had stopped. Now, the summer was beginning again. I closed my umbrella and took a big step forward. 